I was wondering how many science books you have read which were not written by creationists. The reason I ask this is I think that the creationists have a preconception which, when they go out and look at the world and try to work out how things work, how things are put together, they assume that the Bible is correct. Scientists, on the other hand, don't have any preconceptions. They go out, they look at the world, they make observations, measurements, and they don't assume anything. They don't assume the Bible is true, they don't assume that the Bible is false. They go out with an open mind and look at nature and try to work out how everything fits together, how everything works from there. Now, I was wondering if you were familiar with dendrochronology. The reason I bring up dendrochronology is that long before I ever got involved with YouTube, long before I would have called myself an atheist or an agnostic atheist, dendrochronology demonstrated to me that the world has got to be more than 6,000 years old. A brief introduction to what dendrochronology is. When trees grow in this part of the world, the UK, anywhere which has a summer and a winter, so it's not, it doesn't work so well in the tropics. We have warm summers and cold winters. The trees grow in the summertime, they don't grow very much during the winter time. So the amount of new wood which is put onto the outside layer of the trunk and the branches is more during the summer than the winter. And this can be seen by rings when you cut a branch or a tree trunk across the way you see these growth rings and from them, the width of them, you can work out whether there has been a warm summer or not so warm summer. If the gap between the rings is wider then it's been a good warm summer. If the gap is narrower it's been a colder summer. Now from this you, you cut down a very old tree, say one that's 300 years old, you can work out from the width, the spacing of the rings what the weather has been like, approximately, going back 300 years, if it's a 300 year old tree. Now, it is from this process of dendrochronology, reading tree growth rings, that we know about ice ages. It, it's one of the reasons, one of the supporting pieces of evidence to tell us, or for us to work out, when the ice ages were and the general change in the climate going back many, many thousands of years. When trees die, particularly in places like this where there are peat bogs, you can find the remains of trees which are fairly well preserved. So you can go back more than a few hundred years by putting together these growth rings in chronological order and it has been possible to go back, I think, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head here, it's a long time since I looked into this in any detail, but I'm pretty sure we can go back pretty accurately about 40,000 years, which is a lot more than 6,000 years. So, if the Earth really is only 6,000 years old, what's going on with the tree growth rings? I'm not trying to destroy Christianity or to make fun of people who believe certain things, but um, just trying to get to grips with what we are, who we are, and yes, I know the Bible has quite a detailed description of who we are and what we are and how we got here, but it seems pretty obvious that uh, there are some mistakes in there. If not mistakes, then mistakes in the interpretation. Why, why do Christians not agree amongst themselves on the interpretation of the Bible? Some people, like yourself, Nephi, genuinely seem to believe that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. 
I'm not trying to discredit all of your beliefs, but on this one point, I think you're wrong. I think you're very wrong. So, I would be interested to hear what you have to say about dendrochronology. The whole area of scientific inquiry is an attempt by humans to understand the world we live in. We look at everything without any preconceived ideas about what the truth is. We look at the evidence, take measurements, make calculations, and we deduce how things got to be the way they are. It's a bit like detective work. We look for clues, and from the clues we build an understanding of how the world really is. And it's an ongoing process, one which we may never get to the bottom of. Usually, when we make these inquiries, we uncover more questions, there are more mysteries, more things we don't know about. But it's like pieces of a very large jigsaw puzzle. We keep finding more pieces. We refine what we already know. If we find new evidence which discredits an old theory, then the old theory gets chucked out. Move on. Very simple, really. Every link you have sent me to, Nephi, to have a look at what the scientists are saying about a particular subject you're speaking about, it's always a creation scientist. Which is fine. You know, I'm interested in what they have to say. But um, in the interest of balance, I have to look at what other scientists are saying about the same subject. And the scientists who don't have religious preconceptions um, don't always agree with what the Christian scientists are saying. That, that sounds pretty obvious, but it's very important for anyone researching any subject to be aware of this. So keep an open mind.